Hi folks, this is Tom Affolder again, and I'd like to continue my lecture on methods and discuss with you today arguments, if you will, depending upon the type of language that you're used to. Microsoft tends to call them parameters. So let's go back to that example we were working on in the previous method lecture. And you'll recall that what we've got here is a program that when we run it and we put numbers in, we get the two numbers multiplied out. In our previous, let me stop this, Is there code behind, let's get out of that. That was from the previous demo. Now, looking back at our code, what we did earlier <clears throat> was we created a method. And this was a method that received no arguments. We simply call that method, it jumps down, sees the method name, it expects it not to return any values, that's what void means, and we're going to clarify that soon. And then we have it basically run this code. So in essence, this is like a player piano. Every place it sees that, it's going to, in essence, run this code. Now, what I'd like to do, though, is increase the performance of this just a little bit. Notice that what's happening is, is inside this object, we're referring to, or excuse me, inside this method, we're referring to two different objects on our form. We're referring to text num1 and text num2. And that's this information here. What I'd like to do is not have the method itself refer outside of this object directly to those text boxes. Rather, what I'd like to do is have those values of the text boxes passed in to sum. Now remember, he, up above here, we've got our event handler. And in our event handler, we have two different parameters being passed in in this case. We have sender and we have E. Now, in order to create a parameter, what we need to do is we need to give the parameter a data type and a name. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to return to sum here and the method. And within the parentheses, okay, and this is the signature of the method, within sum here, I'm going to identify two different strings that are going to be passed in, num1 and num2. So I'm going to define it as string, num1, and then I'm going to do string, num2. Now, what's happening here is values are going to be passed in by value. Okay, information to be passed in by value. It's going to expect two different pieces of information to be passed in when we call sum. And you'll notice the error occurring up here now is the error is going to say, wait a minute, um, I'm expecting two different parameters to be passed in. Notice when I highlight it, it looks for string num1 and string num2 already. We haven't even saved it yet. So at this point, I receive string num1 and string num2. I don't have to declare these variables because when they're passed in, this will be the equivalent declaration statement right here, as well as the initial value that's going to be passed into it. So now what I can do is turn around, come back down here, and just change it to num1 and num2. And all of a sudden now, this area is going to work just fine. This is a pretty well-contained method. But I've got an issue now, and that is that both of my sums are expecting to have some value passed through them to this method. So let's go back over here and take a look at what we need to do. These guys want me to pass into it the value of num1 and num2. Where's that coming from? It's coming from those two text boxes. So let's go to the very first one and let's put in text num one dot text. That's where it's going to get the very first value. Then we're going to put in text num2 dot text. That's the second value. And of course we'll copy that over the top of this other one. Now before we run it, let's go back in and talk about what's going to happen. When you click the calculate button, it's going to grab the value out of the first text box, and it's going to grab the value out of the second text box, and it's going to pass by value that information. So it's going to pass text num1.text as the first value. It's going to receive that value in this method as num1. It's going to pass text num2.text, and whatever value's in that text box, it's going to receive that as num2. 
let's run this initially and see what happens. Let's make sure it works. So let's put our 5 and 4 calculate. It worked. Now, as it's running, let's jump over here and watch it run. So I'm going to put a stop right here. I'm going to put a stop on the calculate button and we're going to compare what's happening here. Okay, let's jump back to the program and let's just simply re-hit the calculate button again. Now let's let's prove that this is working. Let's do a 7 by 6 and hit calculate. So now we've now launched that event handler. The button was clicked. Now notice sender has information into it and e arguments has information into it as well. We don't really care about that right now. Now, let's take a look and see what text num1 has in it. It has a 7. That's the 7 that's going to be passed down when it's run, executed to num1. On the second value, that's a 6. That should be passed down to num2. Let's find out. So let's step into this. It's going to execute the method and pass those two values in. It's now call the method and let's see what it's received. It's received a 7 and it's received a 6 and we should then be able to step through this guy just like that. And if everything works correctly, there we go. We've got our 42 response. Now let's jump back and take a look at one other way. We could change this around just a little bit keep jumping to my code behind here. Now, to make this a little bit more flexible, perhaps what we really want to do is, is have this as a raw sum value. Instead of receiving a string for both values, let's receive, receive numeric values. Now, I'm, I'm just going to change this up a bit. It's going to function the same way. But I think in this particular case, I'm going to make the sum a little bit more reasonable. Because when you sum something, you expect to take two numbers, multiply it together, and get a response back. You don't expect to get two strings and have to convert them. So let's just do a little bit different perspective here. In this case, what I want to do, it's going to change this method around. I want this to become a double. We're going to receive a double for both values. It's really going to simplify this method, but it's going to change things up above a little bit. Oops. So we've got these two double values. Now we don't have to do any of this. None, none of this at all. And in fact, we don't have to have any of this up here. I can delete all of that code out, and all I have to do is simply come back down here and change this to num1 and this to num2. So what we're doing is, and let me see where my mistake is here, it says I got a mistake. Let's just take a look and let's build it. See what it tells me. Oh, it's because I'm still running my previous program. Yes, I do. Now let's take. Oh, now let's see. We need to change this up here now. Now the challenge that we have is is the original sum is passing string information, but expects to receive numeric. So again, this is six of one, half dozen of the other. Either we change it to a value before we pass it or we pass it as a string and we change it to a value after we receive it. What I'm going to do now is I'm simply going to change it to a value. Now what I could do is I could come up here, create a variable, parse the text box into a variable if I want to, but we're a little bit more advanced now in the C Sharp, so what I'm going to do is I'm just simply going to come right to the beginning of this and I'm going to parse it right here. I'm going to do a double dot parse and right when I pass it into it, as I pass it in, I'm going to parse it. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Double dot parse. And now what I'm doing is I'm passing into it, not the text, but the parsed version of the text is a double. So what it would do is receive the first number, say the string 7, it's going to parse it as a double, make it a 7.0, and that's what it's going to pass down to it. Um, and I need to make sure I do the same thing up above here. So let's copy this out, paste it back up here, okay, 
and let's take the stop out and let's run it and see if it's going to work. Okay. Sure as heck worked. Excellent. Now uh, I want to talk a little bit about parameters before we break away here because we've got some more examples to work on. Um, I can pass most anything into a method, any type of data that you're looking at. In fact, it doesn't even have to be a variable data type. You know, in this particular case, we could pass integers, doubles, Boolean variables, string, obviously. But later, we're going to find out that we can also pass in an object. And in fact, that's what this guy right here is. The sender up above is an object. Um, and the, the sender object has got some really cool features built into it, but we'll reserve that for another lecture to talk about sender. For right now, just keep in mind that when we use a um, parameters, that whatever number of parameters the method has, we have to have a method that has that same number of parameters. Um, you'll see that if I was to remove this guy right now, delete him out, get rid of that parameter, I'm going to get an error. And the reason is, is sum is expecting two parameters and if you look down below here it's telling you exactly that always read these messages carefully it's looking for a double and a double to be passed and that's not what it's getting it's getting a single double so let me do a control Z here and get those back now another thing that's interesting too is that when you build that now um, and you type in your method and you hit your left parenthesis you're now going to get IntelliSense that tells you what it's looking for two double values inside. So that's pretty much an overview of how to pass parameters into a method. We're going to take a look at some individual examples as I mentioned earlier. In my next lecture though, I think we're going to talk a little bit about what um, functions are and then we're going to get a little bit into overloading.